Mr. Harker. What's up? What's happened? Somebody is a little drunk. <laughs> It's Mr. Parker. He's fallen from the penthouse. Parker? Is he dead? I'll say. Better call the police. Come on, let's pick him up and carry him inside. No, don't touch him until the police get here. That's Adam Harker. Can you imagine that way? Calling car 14. Calling car 14. In 13th District. At 921 Lake Street. 921 Lake Street. Harker Apartments, investigate an accident. That's all. What are you doing, Wilford? Reconstructing the accident? I'm afraid I fell. Yes, I'm afraid you did. The next time you do it, see if you can't be a little nearer the edge of the roof. If he jumped from here, it would land him just about where he fell. Well, why do you say jumped? Because I'm an inspector and I can say anything I want to. I only thought... I know. I warned you against thinking. You think I'm so dumb I haven't considered the possibilities of a murder. But I have, Wilfred. That's why I'm having so much fun. Who's the young lady? If I take her word for it, she was Harker's secretary. Hmm. Must be pleasant having such a secretary living on the premises. I wonder if I could have been wrong about you all this time. Mr. Harker would commit suicide, Miss Perry? No, I can't imagine him doing it. <clears throat> no, no, I would see Wilfred, that... why don't you go in with the doc? He might need you. Okay. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, sir. How long have you been working for Mr. Harker? Only three weeks. Not long enough to know much about his affairs, eh? No. Did he always have his secretaries live on the premises? I believe so. Anyone else live here? Any servants or housekeepers? You mean, uh, chaperone? There's only one maid, Augusta. She's a little bit dumb, but very respectable, I assure you. Would you like to meet her? Uh, just a minute. Where is your bedroom? In there. What time did you go to bed? About 9.30. I went to my room earlier than that to read. I heard Mr. Harker go out about 9 o'clock, but I didn't hear him come in. Do you sleep soundly? I suppose so. And you heard nothing? No disturbance until the shriek. Not a sound. 
Mm. All right. Let's see the maid. This way. Inspector, Mr. Hawker's had an accident. No. Was anybody hurt? He's dead. He fell from the roof garden. Mr. Harker? Oh, the poor man. What was he doing hanging over the roof garden? That's what we want to know. Now, were you here all evening? Yes, I was. I meant to go out, but I was reading such an exciting mystery all about a green face that floats up to windows. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I don't know how respectable she is, but you were right about the dumb part. Outside of green faces, did you see or hear anything? Oh, that's funny. I did. At least I think I did. I was asleep when I heard it. But I was dreaming such an exciting dream, I wouldn't let myself wake up for fear of missing the finish. You could have stayed for the second show. What? Nothing. Let it go. Well, as I was saying, I heard the noise, but I don't know whether it was a real noise or just a noise in the dream. You see, I can hear dreams as well as see them. Where's Wilfred? Wilfred? Yeah, my secretary. I want him to meet Augusta. They have so much in common. What was the noise you may not have heard? It was a sort of hiss. Like that. That settles it. You've got to meet Wilfred. Gee, you're not at all like Philo Van. Well, that's all right. You're so much like the maids in the mystery novel that I'm almost convinced that Parker was murdered. Murdered! <laughs> if you're through with me for the moment, I I'd like to go get dressed. Sure, go ahead. But don't leave the apartment. Pleasant dreams. Inspector Russell speaking. Who lives in the penthouse across the hall? Why, it's uh, vacant, sir. Oh. Who lives in the apartment directly under this? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tom Covey. Well, give them a ring and find out if they heard any disturbance up here tonight. And call me back. Yes, sir.
Hello, Eddie. Hello, Ted. What's the latest? Oh, nothing much. Gang's still waiting upstairs. Why don't you go up? I'm stuck down here. Chief told me. Oh. Say, uh, Eddie, you, uh, you wouldn't like to make a fin, would you? A fin? <laughs> This another one of your jokes? No, on the level. One of those upstairs bet me a 10 spot that there was no eagle on a lieutenant's badge. <laughs> Do I uh, collect? According to my tag, you do. Oh, wait till they see that. I'll give you five bucks for helping me win it. Too easy. Yeah. I'll say it is. Oh, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who do you think you are? You must be a new man. Old enough to know a wise guy like you. Sorry, Lieutenant. Go right in. Whoa. Don't make that mistake again, my good man. No, sir. Say, what's the idea? Get on, How is it? Smells all right. How'd you get in here? Power of the press. Well, suppose you just press right out again. I thought you might need my help. Not while I have Wilfred. Beat it. All right. You will be sorry. Well, no marks of violence, but it looked like he clutched at something as he went down. Three of his nails were broken off. Three of his nails, eh? Huh. I wonder how that happened. Did you find any evidence of suicide? Any notes? Nope. Murder? Nope. Nobody heard a sound. Then it must have been an accident. Yes, I guess it was. Central 5800. Morning news? City editor, please. Mr. Perkins, Pat Morgan. I don't know enough yet, but uh, you can give it a spread, one of those question things. Was Harker murdered? All right, give me a rewrite, man. Hello. Pat Morgan on the Harker case. Who? Stop asking questions and take this down. I may get stopped any minute. Okay, go on. You can give it a heading of questions. Was Harker philanthropist or crook? Who was the mysterious B, B double E, who telephoned Harker's apartment two hours before his death and said, I've got to see you. Why was Martini, big underworld boss, a frequent and secret visitor at Harker's apartment? Got it. Go on. What was the meaning of the serpent card sent to Harker 12 hours before his death? I have it, but I'm afraid I can't get it to you tonight. Scribe it. Picture of coiled serpent in one of cards. Phonetic spelling of hiss coming from its mouth. Letters clipped from newspaper and pasted on card read. You will hear it. Another question. Was the hissing sound the maid heard the materialization of the threat of the card. And last, was Harker's death accident, suicide, or murder? That all? OK. Thanks. I thought I told you to get out of here. I'm going. Hey. Hey, get a load of this, will you?
didn't you send them the uh, dope on that Harker death? But I did, Mr. Perkins. I gave it to a rewrite man. You gave it to the Express. I plant you in the spot three weeks before a murder happens. And when it breaks, we're carrying a spread of the European debt situation. You're fired. It looks like it. You want to see something interesting? Come here. Does that suggest anything to you? Parker could have fallen from here instead of from the roof garden, couldn't he? He not only could, but we believe that he did. That broken pole suggests that someone clutched at the curtain in an effort to save himself. Now, Harker's nails were badly broken, and there are deep scratches in the paneling there. And now we'll talk about you. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. What do you want to know? Do you know a reporter by the name of Ted Rand? Ted. Yeah, I can see that you don't. Well, he got a lot of first-hand information in his paper this morning, and I can't figure out where he got it, unless it was from you. May I see it? Well, did he get it from you? Let's have a little talk. And then I'll decide whether or not I'm going to lock you up for withholding information from the police. Hmm. Yeah, Wilford is on his way down now with a picture of Kobe. He's been missing since last night. Broadcast a description of him. And tell Brown I want all the hotels checked, the steamboats. Railroad stations. Send out a general alarm. And when you get him, book him for murder. All right. All right, what's your name? Morgan. Pat Morgan. I'm a reporter on the morning news. 
That is, I was a reporter on the morning news until Ted Rand pinched my story last night. <laughs> what did they do? Fire you? Oh. What was the idea of posing as Harker's secretary? What are you after? Harker. My editor got wind of some connection between Harker and Joe Martini. He couldn't figure what the town's favorite saint was doing in business with a racketeer. Were they in business? I don't know. I know Martini was up here several times, always late at night, and always when Harker thought I was asleep. But as far as getting anything definite on him, I didn't have any luck. Well, how about the Kobe woman? Her name was B, by the way. It was? Well, that looks like... <laughs> The world's oldest story. That's why we're after the husband. But what I want to know is about that last phone call of hers. How did you know about it? I listened in on the extension. Oh. What did you hear? A woman's voice. And she said, this is B. I've got to see you. And Harker said, all right. And hung up. <laughs> Talkative cuss, wasn't he? Has Martini got an apartment here? 804. How did you get a hold of the serpent card? Do you think there's anything in it? <laughs> I'm asking the questions. How did you get hold of it? I snitched it out of his pocket. You've been kind of busy, haven't you? Did you see him when he got it? How did he act? Scared? Puzzled. He tossed it in the wastebasket, and then fished it out. Studied it for a few minutes and put it in his pocket. Where is the card now? I'll get it. Did you find another one? Yeah. Where? In Mrs. Kobe's apartment? In the wastebasket. What does it mean? Oh, it's either a threat or some fake advertisement. I'm checking now to see if anyone else in the house got one. Well, is there anything else you want to tell me? No, but maybe if I stayed on for a few more days and went through his papers, I might run across something. And as his secretary, I should help settle his affairs. Don't you think it's a good idea? I think it's a good penthouse. You know, I ought to lock you up. If we'd have this information last night about the Kobe woman and her husband, we'd have Kobe now. But what's the use of expecting a reporter to tell a cop anything? But I'm not a reporter anymore, and I might run across something. Don't you think it's a good idea? I think you're trying to flirt with me. If I didn't have four kids and a wife that can lick her weight in wildcats, I might like it better. Go on, stay here. But don't get the idea that you're smarter than the police. And don't hold back anything that you find. Hello? I think we have Kobe for you. What do you mean, think? Won't he admit it? He isn't admitting anything. He's down at the morgue on a slab. What? I'll be right down. What is it? Where are you going? Have you found Kobe? Oh, let me go with you. But I'm not a reporter anymore, and you can tell me everything in perfect confidence. All right, all right. Mark! Hey! Hey! Hey, Pat! Uh, hey, follow that car, will you? Woo! <laughs> 
For. I ain't going in that place. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, I ain't. Can't get me in that place. I done seen one dead body today, and that's enough. It's too much, yes, sir. We only want you to look at my hand. Dead? Yeah. Nothing doing. Uh, who is the man? Covey. Mr. Covey dead? Why, I didn't like that man alive. So what makes you think I'm going to like him dead? Why didn't you like him alive? He didn't talk enough. And it's a sure thing he ain't doing no talking now. All he did is sit around and look at the walls, staring. That's what. And it ain't good when a man don't talk. Well, it won't be good for you if you don't get out of that car now. It ain't gonna be good for me if I does, so I'm staying. You want me to lock you up? Where? In the city jail. They's alive in jail, ain't they? All right, sir. Lock me up with the living. What's the trouble? She won't budge. I ain't anxious to start no trouble, sir, but I just naturally don't like dead people. You the janitor? Yes, sir. You knew Colby by sight, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. All right, that's enough identification. You can go. That way? Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. Hey! Hey, Eddie, open up, will you? Ah. Uh, hey, listen, stick around here a minute, will you? I may be going right back. Hello, Eddie. Hello. How's the boy? Hiya, Sam. What detained you? Uh, I uh, had some business to attend to. What you mean is you wasted an hour hanging around the police station. If you'd picked me up, I'd told you they were headed for the morgue. Is it uh, the depressing atmosphere of this place, or uh, do I imagine that you're angry with me? I? Angry with you? Huh. What have I to be angry with you about? You only pinched my story and made me lose my job. But what does that matter? You, you, you lost your job? Yes, I lost my job. I suppose you think that's very funny. It's probably the funniest thing you ever heard of. You probably laughed yourself sick over it. Oh, no, darling. I... Hey, it's all right to cry in this joint, but Nick's on the lovemaking. Oh, you go to the devil, will you? Come on, darling, let's get out of this place. Eddie hasn't any romance in his soul. Let's go to a speakeasy. What's romantic about a speakeasy? I'm going to propose to you again, and no cracks from you. The only funny crack I can think of would have to come from her. Yeah? What's that? If she said yes. <laughs> funny man. <laughs> you know, darling, Eddie's wife got him the job here in the morgue. She thought he'd take the hint and die. <laughs> come on, honey. Well, do we go straight to the marriage bureau, or do I have to do some more talking? You have to do plenty of talking. Okay, we'll go to Joe's. I'll even take you in a cab. Three seventy-five West Fifty-Eight. Couldn't you sit a little closer? Not without being arrested. And speaking of arrest, did you know that the Hawker case was all over? All over? Yep, all washed up. What do you mean? What happened at the apartment? Plenty. Did you see Hawker's maid, Augusta, last night? Well, I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, believe me, darling, you'll remember it. You call me darling. I didn't mean to. 
Well, she's something to feast the eyes on. Or was. She was found murdered this morning. In Harker's apartment? No, the janitor. Say, are you kidding me? I? Listen, I'm the one who shouldn't trust you, not you, me. I'm sorry, darling. Go on. Well, they found a marriage license in the apartment. Whose? The janitor's. It seems she was married to the janitor, but uh, worked for Harker. Oh, oh, one of those. Say, look here, you worked for Harker, too. Only on a double cross. He only made a couple of passes at me. He made what? Why, I'll kill him. Oh, he's already dead. The janitor killed him. Killed him and his wife, and then committed suicide. They dragged his body out of the East River this morning. That's what they had down at the morgue. The janitor's body? And the maid's, too. Say, listen, has any of the mob got this story yet? I don't think so. Hey, driver, driver, drive up to that drugstore, will you? You mind if I phone it in? No. I'll only be a minute. All right, but hurry. I'll hurry. Driver, drive on. You don't want to wait? I don't want to wait. to the drugstore. I figured you might want to go back. That's why I made that right turn back there. You know too much. I've been driving a cab for 10 years. I've seen about all there is to see. Here you are, miss, and there's your man. Man? Don't be vulgar. <laughs> Where'd you go? Listen, Ted. What's the matter? A story I told you about the maid and the janitor. Well, what about it? It isn't the truth. I, I made it up. Huh? Uh, I wanted to get even for last night, so I made it up. There isn't a word of truth in it. Holy smokes! <laughs> Haven't you got a nickel? No. I did. I know you'd mind so much. Mind? I phoned that story into your paper. My paper? Yeah, I wanted to make up for last night. Haven't you got a nickel? No. I told your editor what happened last night, and I held this scoop up, if he'd give you your job back. He said yes, so I gave him the story. Haven't you got a nickel? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Oh. Terry. Yes? Come in here. I found something just like in a mystery. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Oh, Mr. Harker's lawyer said I was to pack up Mr. Harker's things and clear out the apartment. But look at those drawers. Mr. Harker's or the wooden ones? Oh, Miss Terry, aren't you the one? The wooden one. Do you see any difference in them? Did they come out of the same chest? They did. And so I investigated. And look what I found. Pressed and pressed all around here. And finally, sure enough, there it was. A little place behind there. Empty. But it wasn't. There was a letter there. And it reads like a threat. And he signs himself the juice. What? Oh, that means the electric chair. Central 5800. Morning news. Give me the files, please. Hello? 
Hello, Willie. This is Pat Morgan. Would you do me a favor? Well, yes. Look in the files and see when and where a man by the name of Danny Fagan was executed. That's all I have is the name. What? The chair, yes. And call me back at Drake 6048. Thanks. And Willie, see if it says anything about his relatives, particularly a brother or uh, anyone who visited him on the day of his execution. That's right. Thanks. Augusta, will you make yourself scarce? Scarce? Scarce. In other words, scram. What are you going to do, ma'am? If I wanted you to know, do you think I'd ask you to leave the room? Oh, I never thought of that. Will you send the janitor up here right away, please? Thanks. Mr. Martini's apartment, please. Now, Mr. Martini doesn't answer. Thank you. Janitor, miss. Yes, come in. What's your name? Peterson. Uh, well, look, do you have a pass key to all the apartments? Uh, yes, ma'am. For ten dollars, would you let me in an apartment for five minutes while you stand guard outside? What apartment? Joe Martini. Oh, I... I couldn't think of it, miss. Not for, not for twenty dollars. Not even if it helped solve the mystery of Mr. Harker's death? Mr. Harker's death? Why, that's solved. I identified Mr. Corby's body myself. The police said he did it. Maybe. But I don't think so. Come on, nobody will find it out. I just phoned Martini's apartment and there was no answer. Now, all you've got to do is stand guard out in the hall. And if Martini comes out of the elevator, you whistle. Or, better still, you could hammer on something. Oh, I, I, I don't like it, miss. I'd, I'd be sure to lose my job. If I get caught, I'll swear I got in with a skeleton key. Come on. Well, all right, if you'll, if you'll keep me out of it. But, uh, I, I don't like it. Here you are, miss. You stand by this radiator, and if you hear him coming, you hammer on it. All right, miss, but I don't like it. It'll be all right. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Martini. Hello. Miss Terry, in apartment A. Uh, just a moment. Hello. Oh, so it's you. Well, I've called every speakeasy in town. Where are you? I'm at home. What's on your beautiful little mind? Little mind? Plenty. Listen, I've just found something. Did you ever hear of a man by the name of Denny Fagan? What was that? Did you drop something? No. Don't say any more. I'll be right up. Thank you. Blue steel revolver. Black blackjack. Pink toothbrush. Well, what in the world? I'm spending the night. Here? Certainly. You know, I didn't like that sound over the telephone. Somebody was listening in. What's this about Denny Fagan? Do you remember the case? Certainly. He was sent to the chair for killing Julius Brinkman. Well, look at this. What? We found this in Harker's things. Hmm. Anything else? Plenty. Guess whose mob he was in. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. About Mr. Josephus Martinis. Yes, Mr. Josephus Martinis. I just got the dope on it from the office. There may be something in it, and then again, no. Listen, if Kobe killed his wife, and then Harker, and the case is closed, who's interested enough in this apartment to listen in over the phone? Surely Kobe wasn't listening in from the morgue. Mm -hmm. Let's hope not. right away. The lights have gone out. Thank you. <laughs> Ed, the eye. Thanks, Augusta. Want a lemon? Yes, Augusta. Lemon. You know, come to think of it, this Fagin kid was supposed to be mixed up in Mark. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that got it, miss. I'll see if any of the globes are burned out. All right, thanks. Here's my eye, Still looking for the lemon. Oh, the lemon. I'll find it. There's some people that thinks I'm a swell guy. Oh, you're great. Yeah? Well, that's your idea. You're only showing off for my benefit. I can use a gun. <laughs> you'd probably shoot me and become a widow before you'd tasted the joys of being married to me. <laughs> Good heavens, what a man. Certainly. Why don't you shut up and go to bed? <laughs> well, I can't very well go to bed with you hanging around here. Oh, I'm leaving. And if anything should happen, you stay in here and keep the door locked. Even if I hear you yelling, Pat, Pat, come save me. Certainly. Oh, go to the devil, will you? Don't drink all the scotch. That's it.
Come on, stick them up and keep them up. Now then, maybe you'll tell me what you're doing in here. Martini. Yeah, <laughs> old dry martini himself. I'll go with you. You stay here. Don't be silly. There's a deep cut in the head, but I'm not satisfied. I want an autopsy. All right. All right, Martini, talk. Now you talk. What was one of your men doing in my place? Finding enough evidence to send you up for life. Yeah, did he have a search warrant? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Weston was probably trying to serve it on you when you killed him. Uh, you'll have to come stronger than that. I wasn't even in the apartment when he died. How do you know when he died? I heard him yell. They heard him yell too. I was with them when it happened. So you can't pin this on me. Maybe not. But I can pin about six gang killings on you, and that ought to be enough. Take him down and lock him up. Who? Me? No, Wilfred. I want him locked up. All right, Brown. Take a couple of men with you. Yes, sir. Shall I iron him? You bet. And keep your eye on him every minute. This is going to cost you your job, Russell. You shouldn't threaten a police officer. It isn't polite. Get going. Go up to the penthouse. I want to have a little talk with you. You stay here until I come back. May I make a suggestion? And no, Wilfred. Make it to the doctor. I'm tired. I wouldn't stay here another night for all the tea in China. <laughs> You're smarter than somebody else I know. I want you to get out of here in the morning. You're not only in danger, you're just plain dumb. When you found this letter, why didn't you bring it? I was going to. You were going to. But first, you thought you'd be smart. You had to go messing around in Martini's apartment. He didn't see me. He saw you all right. He thought you got the paper that my man got. He was here tonight to get it back. And in being here, he saved his own life. What makes you think that? Brains and a valentine. I can't figure out yet how the mistake was made. But my man got what was intended for Martini. We found in his apartment. Then I was right. Covey didn't kill them. Maybe. Mail. Heavens, Augusta. You look like you're going to a funeral. I am, ma'am. Mr. Harper's. Oh. And they're burying Mr. and Mrs. Covey today, too. And if I hurry, maybe I can catch them both. Well, have fun. Why, Miss Terry. How you do say such dreadful things.
Where do you want this? What's the matter, miss? Did I startle you? Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. But you... you told me to bring up the trunks. Oh, I know. I forgot about them. You can put them anywhere. It doesn't matter. I wonder, could you come down and pick out yours? I got Mr. Harkas out, but I don't know yours. All right. But couldn't, couldn't we go down in the elevator? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> you can't get my trunk up here any too quick to suit me. I just got a warning that I was going to be killed. You, miss? Oh, who would want to kill you? I wish I knew. Do you live down here? Over there. Hi, but it's dark. I'm the janitor. Where's the trunk room? Uh, this way. Aren't there any lights in here? I'll go in and turn them on. Why don't you answer your bell? I was just about to light the incinerator. Well, that can wait. These gentlemen want you to go with them now. We want to examine some of the apartments. Yes, sir. Start in on this one. Yes. If you don't need me any longer, I'd like to get back to my work. All right, but leave us your party. Yes, sir. May I make a suggestion? No. But you... I'm busy. Some other time, Wilfred.
What do you want? What? I... Tried to get away. Hi. Oh, Doctor, uh, how is Miss Morgan? Oh, she'd be all right. Just keep her quiet a couple of days. <laughs> Try and keep her quiet. <laughs> May I come in? Certainly. Hurry up. Has you confess? Yep. Ah! Oh. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Well, tell me about it. Did he kill them all? Yeah, with the exception of Kobe. How? With gas. They've just held an autopsy on all the bodies. I know. Augusta was nearly broken-hearted because they called off all the funerals. <laughs> Why did he kill him? Revenge. <laughs> you were right, as usual. He was Denny Fagan's brother. Fagan was a cab driver, just a kid, and according to him, honest. Fagan was sharing the apartment with one of Martini's men. They used Fagan's cab to take Brinkman on his last ride. They even planted a gun on the kid. And he was the only one of the mob that didn't have an airtight alibi. Oh, gee, you look cute in that bandage. Please, get out of the murders. Well, that's all. Denny Fagan was sent to the chair. That's all? Isn't that enough? I'm just a young kid, too. You're not going to feel sad about it, are you? I would if his brother hadn't tried to stuff me in a furnace. Where did Harker come in? Harker engineered the Brinkman killing. Brinkman was in Harker's way, so he ordered him snuffed out. Martini's mob found it convenient to let Fagan take the rap. <laughs> you mind if I hold your hand? Please, darling, hold my hand. But why did he kill B. Colby? She wasn't mixed up in it. No. But by killing Harker and her in her apartment, it threw suspicion on the husband. He even sent Kobe a letter telling him to watch her. But when Kobe found out what was going on, he didn't kill them. <laughs> he just jumped in the river. Why, but you take death lightly. What if I'd been killed? Oh, baby, I'd have written you a swell obituary. I'll bet you would have at that. In some speakeasy. Don't be silly, gal. You know I don't go to speakeasies. I got an idea. How about the last drink of Harker's scotch? I've already ordered it. But you might go see if Augusta's drinking it. All right. Is this... Is this Miss Patricia Morgan? This is she. Uh, this is Perkins. Not dear Mr. Perkins. Cut that. You want to come back? What do you mean, how much? How much more? We'll discuss that when I see you. No, you won't, because you aren't going to see her. What? Who is this? Miss Morgan's future husband. Who says so? I do. The woman's place is in the home. Hey, listen. What home? I have an apartment. I'll bet the rent isn't paid. Now, don't be mercenary. 
Will you listen to me? I'll bet you haven't the price of a marriage license. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Will you lend me three bucks? Why, of course, Mr. Rand. I'll get it right away. Certainly I've got three bucks. Sure. See here, Morgan. Haven't you any gratitude in your system? Do you realize what I've done for you for the last three years? I've kept you on the payroll of this paper. I've given you more opportunities than any sob sister in the business. Now well, let's get together on this thing, Morgan. There ain't any use of us acting like this. You know, we've always been able to iron out these little things. Morgan, I say, Morgan, why don't you answer me? Thank <laughs> you.